In today's video, I'm going to share the five key takeaways with you from the book The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter B. and I welcome you here at My First Million, where we are achieving our financial goals together. So this is basically a book summary of a book that I was waiting to read, waiting quite eagerly to read for quite, quite some period of time, because I over and over heard the recommendation from the personal finance community that The Simple Path to Wealth is one of the best personal finance books to, to read. So a while ago, I finally had the chance to read the book. And to be honest, my first reaction was a little bit underwhelming. I guess it's because I put a lot of hopes into this book because of the huge recognition it got in the personal finance community. So potentially, like when you're going to see a movie, maybe a mediocre movie, but you're really looking forward to it, but you don't know yet that it's a mediocre movie. So potentially I got this kind of disappointment from, from this book. However, ha having had some time to reflect on the book, actually I really believe it's a good book, but it wasn't probably the right timing for me to read this book. Potentially, I would have been better off if I would have read this book a bit earlier in my personal finance journey. And therefore, before I go into the five key takeaways of this book, I want to give you a very quick introduction who should be reading the book, in my opinion. And there's a specific group of people in a specific situation who really should take a look at this book and re read it through, maybe even cover to cover as there is still a lot of knowledge within this book. So let me show here, based on the wealth cycle, who should be reading this book, who is a book addressing to. And also this is visualizing probably a little bit of my disappointment of this book. So the wealth cycle is covering all the basics of personal finance. The basics are you, you have your earnings, then minus your spendings, and then you get your savings. Once you have your savings, you use them into for investments. And of course, if you do the right things for investing, you should be able to generate a rate of return, which then in effect can boost your earnings. So the personal finance journey, an optimal personal finance journey, will take a look at the wealth cycle and cover all four areas and you will try over time to optimize all four areas to get the best results from your personal finance journey. And I think that was my main disappointment of this book because it doesn't really cover all those four areas. A little bit in contrast to what the title of the book was suggesting. So, but what is the book basically covering? The book is ideal for people who have figured out the first line already, who have a decent earning, who are con well controlled for their spending and therefore are saving a decent rate and therefore have money left over for investments. So if someone is starting out with investing, I believe the simple path to, we to wealth is probably the best book that you can read. So when you're starting out investing, the Simple Path to Wealth is the right book for you. So in general, at least when I read the book, I got an overall feeling that the book already assumes that you have figured out how to save money. But once you have figured out how to save money, the book is exactly right for you, especially when you start your investment journey. So now the five key takeaways. And I'm probably a little bit oversimplifying it a bit, but I still want to share the, the takeaways with you. First takeaway, I believe, is still spend less than what you earn. So this is basically the assumption of the book that you figure out the first line of the wealth cycle already. You spend less than what you earn so you can save. And that's actually the, the logic assumption of the first area 
the first three areas of the valve cycle. Then the second takeaway. So if you can save, the second takeaway is you build up the emergency fund. So you will take maybe three to six months of salary. So you will take maybe three to six months of your expenses to put them into a savings account so that if you have any emergency, you can withdraw the money from there. So this is the second takeaway. Then the third area, and this already goes to in, into the investing area, is pay down debt quickly. Why I say pay down debt quickly is going into the investment area. This is basically if you have negative investments, you are in debt. Or if you are or in other words, if you are in debt, you are having negative investments. So what he's, he's saying in the third suggestion, at least for me, this was the third key takeaway, pay down debt as quickly as possible if you have any. But again, I'm oversimplifying a little bit. Then the fourth key takeaway of this book is I think where the book really excels. The fourth takeaway is buy stock market index funds and do basically a passive or follow a passive investing strategy. And as I said, I think I've already mentioned it several times. This is the really the key strength of this book. Why? Because I think many people starting out in investing are taking the wrong approach. They are not usually take the easy approach and the more certain to succeed leading approach, just investing into index funds or ETFs and have a in passive investment strategy. Instead, most people, when they start off investing, they maybe they will buy the stock of a specific company or they are trying to get a first real estate deal that they could try out their investment journey in real estate. But those kind of investment, either a specific company or trying to get a real estate deal usually is a strategy that is maybe less likely to be successful, even though maybe the returns could be higher, but also the risk of failures could be higher. And therefore, I think the book is really pointing out people to the right direction, starting off with buying stock market index funds first and let it roll very passively every month put in some money and build up your investment portfolio very passively. If you save more than what you are doing according to your plan, that what you in passively invest every month according to your plan. Of course, over time, you can still try at least with a small portion of your money to build up an investment portfolio of specific stocks or you also can try to have a real estate deal. But the foundation of the investment strategy should be passively as the passive strategy will most likely lead you to success. If you want to learn more how to start investing passively in index funds or ETFs, take a look at the description of this video. I have done a video before on how to start out with investing. And especially, I think this ex exactly covers the same area, but the fourth takeaway is covering as well. And so far, I believe this video that I'm linking in the description has been probably one of the best I have done on this channel so far. So if you're starting out investing, check it out. So now to the fifth and final takeaway of this book, The Simple Path to Wealth is you need to change or adjust your strategy slightly with age. Depending how old you are, you want to do some adjustments in your investment strategy. And this is probably my second critique point of this book. Basically, um, this fifth point, and which is covering more or less the, the last section of the book, um, is at least from my perspective, not very simple anymore. It's not too complicated, but J.L. Collins is writing in that section. However, if you are a novice in investing, you will probably feel that the last section, 
things start to get a little bit more complicated than what they need to be. So if you're still young, maybe the best way is just to skip the last few chapters in order to avoid any additional unnecessary complexity. However, if you are experienced already in investing or you're already getting a little bit older, I highly recommend also to read the last section. But also be aware that the last section I think is especially written towards a US audience. So if you are living outside of the US, maybe you can pick up several of the recommendations that he is giving in the last section. However, you need to probably consider some adjustments because taxation is different and also the maybe the investment opportunity that you're having are different. So just be aware that you might need to do some adjustments there. So have you read the book The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins? If yes, what are your key takeaways? What did you learn from it? Please share with us in the comments below. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and especially I look forward to seeing you winning financially.